on screen. All right, module two, switching concepts. Um, it's 18 slides, so it's not very big. So let's get stuck into it. All right, so we're going to have a look at how um, a switch forwards frames and have a look at what we call collision and broadcast domains, which is about how traffic works within the switching fabric. So frame forwarding, basic terms you need to know is ingress and egress, which is basically in and out. Okay, switches work at layer two. So we're looking at MAC addresses and we record the MAC address of the source. Okay, so remember in our frames, we have a source address and a destination address. So when a frame enters the switch, it knows that the source of that frame is attached to that port number. So in this little port table it creates, it'll put the source MAC address in and say which port number it came in on. It will then record or attempt to um, ascertain the destination MAC address. And if it's known port relationship. If it's in the table, it'll send it out the port, egress port. If it is not part of the table, it'll send it out every port except for the one that it received it on. So the frame for simple, we'll say the frame came in at port one, source was EE, so it knows that the destination address EE is now associated with port one. And if we're going to port or destination AC, look up the table, we send it out port five. Okay. Now, computer two sends in an, a frame. It's from AA coming in at port two and it's going to DE. I don't have a DE in my table, so I send it out every port except for port two, which it came in on. And that's basically what this CAM table is, content addressable memory is that little table that was on the last slide. And that's what I was talking about there on the last. All right, so a switch will go through a learning phase before it starts to forward any information. So all of its ports will be learning when it first turns on and I'll have an amber light. So all, any frames arriving, it's just recording that so, source MAC address in the CAM table. And the entries in the CAM table are only valid for five minutes. So it requires another frame to arrive to reset the timer in that CAM table. So every time a frame arrives, it resets the timer. After it's spent this period, it's about 30 seconds of learning. It then switches across to forwarding, which you will then forward based on the destination MAC addresses out of the specific port. 
And as I said earlier, if it's not within the table, it will send it out all of the ports. So there's basically two forwarding methods that are used. One's called store and forward, which is basically it re will buffer the entire frame. And check to make sure it's all there and then start forwarding. This adds a little bit of delay. Cut through switching is where it starts to forward the frame even though it hasn't got enough of the information to check the frame is valid. So basically it just waits for enough information for it to determine where to send the frame onto and then starts forwarding that frame. So basically it has very little buffering happening on cut through. So whatever is coming in gets forwarded on. Um, even if it's an invalid frame, it will forward it. Now, as I said, store and forward allows it to gather the entire frame so it can do an error checking on the frame. So to make it does the CRC check to make sure the frame is still fully intact. There's been no corruption of the frame in transit. And while it's waiting, it's collecting the entire frame. So this is buffering. So it buffers the entire frame until it all gets there and then it forwards. Now, this also allows it to cater for differing speeds between the ingress and egress ports. For example, if your ingress port is running at 100 megabits per second and your egress port is running at a thousand, so a gig, um, you wouldn't be able to uh, keep the frame forwarding properly on that gigabit interface without the store and forward method. So how does cut through work? Well cut through receives the first 64 bytes of the message. And basically it's running on the assumption that if a collision was to occur, it would occur within the time frame of transmitting that first 64 bytes. By doing this, it can cut down the delay between forwarding the packet, not the packet, the frame on. So you, you tend to add less than 10 microseconds of time, which is a very fast forwarding check speed. The problem with this is it's got no error detection basically. So any errors are going to be propagated throughout the rest of the network. And when you've got differing port speeds, it falls over because it can't keep the data flow correctly. So what's this look like in reality? So here we have a series of ports and a series of backplanes. Now the back Backplanes are the virtual connections between the ports that are used by the switch to connect port A to port F and so on. So here we have our traffic coming in from port A going to port F, comes in, ATSIC has a look, which is the uh, little engine that 
looks at all the frames and determines how to forward it. It creates a virtual backplane between port A and port F, so it can forward the frame and then forwards it out. Another frame hits the switch, C to G, comes in, uses a different backplane to make the connection. This allows for multiple connections to occur simultaneously within the switch. E to G, now G is currently in use with the previous frame. So it will buffer the content until G is free. And then it'll make a connection to port G and forward that EG frame out. And it'll just alternate between the traffic for port G, putting a frame in and out as required. So that works fantastic when all the ports are at the same speed, but when you've got, which was quite common, in especially in the early days where you're majority of your ports were all at a fixed speed of 100 megabits per second and then you'd have uplink ports which were one gigabits per second so you're buffering and forwarding has a different impact now another item on the list that we need to consider is virtual networks, so VLANs. So VLANs is the logical segregation of ports. So what this does is a switch will isolate the VLAN ports from each other because these say this is VLAN 1, this is VLAN 2, Traffic from VLAN 1 at layer 2 cannot go to VLAN 1 and vice versa. So there is a logical break between those two VLANs. So the traffic is segregated between each other. So A and D, traffic just works normally as per the last slide, E to G. G is not known, so it forwards it out every port of that is a member of that VLAN. Okay, collision domains are where traffic flows between two endpoints. Now if we are using full duplex, then we basically eliminate the collision domain between the host and the switch. If it's half duplex, means the host and the switch can either send or receive, it can't do both. So there's a potential for it to collide, in other words, the host and the switch could potentially send traffic at the same time and it would collide on this cable. So when you set your duplex, just be aware that you're effectively cutting your bandwidth in half. Okay, because you can't send and receive at the same time effectively cut it in half. 
Now, the other thing that most devices now are set with auto negotiate. So they'll set the duplex rate and the speed between the two devices. And we can have an issue if the auto negotiation fails. What we have to do is we go into one device and manually set the duplex and speed settings at one end and that would stop flapping which is what happens when auto negotiation fails. Next we have broadcast domains. Broadcast domains exist up until layer three. So it is only a layer three device that stops a broadcast domain. Okay, so all layer two devices within the same domain receive all broadcasts. So if we looking here, let's just change our little pointer options to pen. And so in this top one here, if our server sends out a broadcast, it will be received by all the devices at once. Now down here, we've got two switches connected. Same scenario, this server sends out a broadcast, hits the layer three device, contained, 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 then we follow the link across to the other switch and then bounce around so as you can see the more devices we have connected together the larger the broadcast domain is and this affects the performance of a switched network in that it has to have all this broadcast traffic forwarded throughout the entire topology even though it's not necessarily traffic for them. So how can we fix the inbuilt issues? Well we can have the features fixed. So in this case, we can um, eliminate issues by having full duplex, which eliminates collisions everywhere except within the back plane of the switch. Okay, so the only place that a collision may occur is in the virtual backplane of the switch. Um, likelihood of that happening is small. We can have fast internal switching um, to increase performance. We can increase the size of the buffers to allow for the holding of the frames, which will eliminate issues with switch speed, not having the same speeds so that the ports can hold the frames until the entire frame is there and then send it on properly. It also eliminates the forwarding of errors in the frames and having high port densities on switches we can then 
provide this switching fabric at a density that saves us money and helps reduce uh, congestion because the traffic doesn't have to go up to a router all the time to be forwarded on. Switching or forwarding frames is more cost effective than forwarding packets via a router. So we had a look at what ingress and egress ports are. We looked at how the CAM table is used to determine the destination of each frame. We had a look at the two methods, store and forward and cut through for switch forwarding. We had a look at how duplex plays a function within collision domains. We also had a look at what a collision domain is and what a broadcast domain is. And we had a quick discussion on how a broadcast domain is broken by a layer three device. And so if you think about that, the more switches you add, the larger the broadcast domain becomes. And we can eliminate collision domains and congestion by the adding switches and having those switches on full duplex helps you increase your throughput and helps you control collisions. And that's it. That was the massive chapter two. All right.